Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome to the first match of round one for our subscriber game tournament. And leading the way on the green side, we have Baby Yoda, and on the red side, we have Zero. And before we jump into battle here, let's take a look at both army compositions. So leading Baby Yoda's army, we have Cao Ren, He Man, and Zheng Jiao. And he has decided to go with an infantry heavy army with two yellow dragons and Qingzhou spears on Cao Ren. Six Huanglao Paragons, which are extremely cost effective on He Man, and four Messenger of Heavens for Zhang Jiao. Now, these Messenger of Heaven are double unit count, but the Huanglao Paragons are half unit, so these things will balance out a little bit. Then, for Zero side, we have Cao Cao leading the way, joined by Guan Yu and Lu Bu. So, very offensive, heavy generals, and we have the ranged units on Cao Cao utilizing his high cunning with a northern mounted horseback archer, three crossbow units, six spear warriors on Guan Yu. I think they are picked for cost effectiveness since they don't really have a lot of defensive stats, but very good at charging the enemy. Then for Lu Bu, we have two sea down cavalry, two peasant, or actually three peasant raiders, plus one melee militia cavalry. So looking at the thought behind both armies, since I have not looked at this battle, my guess is that Baby Yoda Sai wants to charge up into the enemy, a lot of very aggressive infantry, hoping to provide a couple boosts from generals like Zhang Jiao and He Man, as Yellow Turban generals are very good at boosting their troops. Even Cao Ren, being a commander, has quite a few nice abilities, including a heal for his units. Then for Zero side, we have Cao Cao providing a little bit of harass with his range, Guan Yu and Lu Bu definitely will team up to help wipe out enemy generals as well as enemy units. Dragon's Gaze being able to freeze the enemy charge in place and then counter charging with his spear warriors or his cavalry are both great options. That single melee cav is probably used to counter enemy range since both team pick the unit blindly. They don't know what they're up against so having this flexibility is great but now after seeing things there are no range component on Baby Yoda's side, so this unit might be a bit useless. In terms of the cavalry matchup, I actually would favor Zero side, despite the double unit size from Messenger of Heaven, just because the shot cavalry will do a lot better in the cavalry versus cavalry combat, and he actually has a decent amount of spear unit to counter cavalry in general versus the only two Qingzhou units on Baby Yoda side that could actually deal damage to enemy cavalry because Messenger Heaven are really good at dealing with infantry threats but not really against cavalry threat because swords are just not going to provide the extra damage against the cavalry whereas the spear units on the cavalry will get a bonus against cavalry damage output against units such as the Messenger of Heaven. So overall it's going to be a close one can't wait to see how these two duke it out and let's jump into game. Alrighty, so as we hop into battle here, we're going to pause the game with the tactical map to take a look at the deployment and the generals in the game, as this is the first time we can hover over the generals and units. And right off the bat, we have to check the generals to see what tier they are, as in multiplayer you can have one of three tiers. With each increased tier, you have better items, you have more abilities. And looking at all six generals here, it seems like both sides have spent the maximum amount of money by having all three generals at tier 3. So everyone has their gold weapons, everyone has their three abilities available. And looking at the units, we can see that Zero side has a nice spear line using spear warriors, protecting his crossbowmen. Everyone's rank 1, so he didn't spend any extra money ranking up his units. Oh, except for this peasant raider. So he must have some spare cash left over after buying all his units, a very little amount that he can't get another full unit, so he spent it on upgrading his peasant raiders. Now the sneaky thing about Zero's deployment is that he has put two peasant raiders, oh, one of them being level 2, uh, behind enemy lines hiding behind in this forest area. Now because Baby Yoda has no range units, this is not going to be super impactful. but. 
neither side knew that. Deployment was blind, uh, unit picking was blind, so this is the first time as the battle begins that Zero can see what Baby Yoda has and vice versa. On Baby Yoda's side, he has Cao Ren, Zhang Jiao, and He Man. Now they're technically a little bit weaker than Cao Cao, Lu Bu, and Guan Yu, but if used well, they have a nice suite of abilities to boost uh, the army and themselves. He has placed his cavalry on either flank. So these are messengers of heaven, they're double unit size. Therefore, technically, they have the combat capabilities of four, uh, well, double the amount. So eight cavalry units on each side, or not on each side, four on each side, eight in total. And he should probably try to use them to counter the enemy general because the enemy general are a bit stronger than the generals that he has. Because he has no range and a lot of infantry that doesn't have shield, he actually should have put the Huanglao Paragons behind his Yellow Dragons and his Qingzhou Spears. His Qingzhou Spears should have been at the very front if he does intend to charge into the enemy formation because these guys have 60% range block chance and not only that, when they take too much damage where they're about to rout, they will kick in the misplaced devotion buff which will give them unbreakable for 30 seconds. So it's pretty much a guarantee they can rush up into the enemy front line without being broken along the way, which will buy time for the more fragile but higher damage units to clear the lines and do damage. Another thing I'm noticing here is Baby Yoda actually spent a ton of money on upgrading his units. Now granted, Yellow Turban units are cheaper than regular units, he doesn't have a full suite of units. He has six units on He Man but only four units on each of the other generals. He could have recruited another four units for this battle, but instead he piled his money into upgrading his infantry. So both of his yellow dragons are rank four, both of his Qingzhou spear are rank five, every single one of his Huanglao paragon rank three, and his messenger of heaven are rank five. Now, I don't agree with his decision here because upgrading melee units have very minimum effect in the game. You get one point of attack speed and one point of morale and one point of melee evasion for each rank you upgrade. So the reward is very, very minimum. What you want to do with your money in terms of upgrading units is upgrading range units because they get massive boost in range attack rate when they get ranked up. So, well, I mean, he did, Zero did not upgrade his range units either, but if you were going to upgrade a unit, you should definitely think about range units first. Um, you know, having a horse archer here, they can get their attack rate all the way to 60, which I believe is maximum if you upgrade them quite a bit. So, odd choice in my opinion. It's not going to bring him back that much, you know, reward for spending the money there. He could have probably just pumped out four more units, uh, even cheap ones, since he does have Zhang Jiao. A couple more Huanglao Paragons was definitely achievable, especially since more premium units like Yellow Dragons cost quite a bit to upgrade. All right, so aside from that, I think this is pretty balanced deployment on both sides. It's a bit awkward that Baby Yoda has no range, so he pretty much is forced to charge into this very defensive setup here by zero. Could be very hard to break into those spearmen since he is protecting his flanks with his cavalry, probably ready to countercharge anything that tries to flank him. One thing that Baby Yoda does have on his side is he does have Haman's ability of surprise attack, which can give nearby units stock. So as he's exiting the forest, if he uses surprise attack once they enter the range of the crossbow, they could disappear from view and sneak up to their line. That could be fairly useful, uh, but I still would put the Tingzhou Spears in front. Uh, their job is sort of a suicide squad and they would do fairly well charging into a setup like this. So let's unpause the game and we'll stay in tactical view as the game starts and when the action gets hot, when the units clash, we'll jump back into uh, the ground level view and take a look at the action. So we see that Baby Yoda is starting to move his cavalry into the flank. Zero has responded just by charging the general straight up. Whoa, no. Baby Yoda used Surprise Attack. Why? It's only 60 seconds, massive cooldown time, and his units are not going to benefit from being stocked right now, nor from the damage increase and speed increase. If he started it here after he crossed this river, and once he's in- oh, they're backing up too. They're buying themselves some time to waste the buff timer. 
the generals are very isolated. If Baby Yoda launches all three generals and the cavalry into the enemy, he's not charging them. So cavalry is really good at killing generals if you get the charge bonus off. So you should have selected the cavalry into the generals, but because Baby Yoda did not do that, he's actually getting charged by the enemy general instead, and they're just going to get picked off. On the, I guess, right flank of Zero, the mounted archers are not getting microed, and they're getting a clean charge off by the enemy melee cav, which would hurt them a little bit. Uh, Messenger Heaven are not good cavalry killers because they use sword. There's no bonus damage against cavalry. He's trying to get a flank out at the range, but he can't make it there. He's desperately moving. Oh, he got Dragon Gazed. So no more moving for the cavalry for a while. This is pretty damaging. If he turned the crossbow around, actually don't do that because these are melee cav. They don't do a lot of damage. Crossbows actually do surprisingly high damage against generals due to the armor piercing damage. So that's a good choice. Hitting them in the infantry is probably the best option. Also, you don't have to micro as much. He split a spear unit over here to hit the enemy melee cav while the range cav tried to recover. 2v1 here. It's a fair fight, but because these units use spear, they'll do more bonus damage against cav. So I predict Messenger Heaven will probably lose this fight over here. And he has charged his cavalry into the stationary Messenger of Heaven because of the Dragon Gaze. So they're in trouble over here, and the generals are fighting. So let's take a look here. Oh, Zero has dismounted his generals on purpose so they can have faster melee attack rate. So right now, Baby Yoda should be kiting his generals away, or else they're going to get slaughtered over here. He should use his horse. No, Clement. It's too late. Homan's out of this fight and dead before using his Hell of Arrows. If Homan had kited away and just shot Hell of Arrows down this formation, whether into the spear, and then Taurin's also should be charging into the spear. He got the opening right here. No, not this. Not not this. Charge into the crossbow. I said spear, but I meant the crossbow. Okay, so we're getting a buff from Zhang Jiao. But the buff is only on three units. The rest of the infantry didn't move up in time. So the peasant raider from behind has now come and charged at some of the infantry here. The Huanla Paragons got matched up against cavalry, which is not what they're good at. They need to be killing infantry. They finally reached the crossbowmen, but it's a little too late. These units already got their damage through. Range block chance? That should have been there way earlier. Just got activated. Zhang Jiao needs to get killed, but Zhang Jiao needs to get killed in the middle of his army because he will pass on his Lord of Heaven buff, which will grant invincibility for the next 60 seconds. Quite powerful to turn things around. But invincible does not make you unbreakable. Oh, another Dragon's Gates, so these units can't move. Both flank. Zero has won both flanks. He's now chasing. Oh, this is a good kite by the Messenger of Heaven, but he's going to get caught up eventually. This flank is, is lost. Tinjo's spear tried to chase, but he's just kiting away until they commit to something else and then rear charge them. Messenger of Heaven, after getting Dragon's Gates, are both spent. Yeah, the front line's collapsing over here. He needs to find a way to get Zhang Jiao killed. He needs to send Zhang Jiao into Lu Bu, for example, to hopefully get some return damage and buff his units so that they're invincible right now. The crossbowmen have finally stopped being useful because the melee has started, but as units route and move out, they can still get a couple shots in. Yellow Dragon getting ignored over here, getting charged by any cavalry. So this Northern Archer lost half of their cavalry, but has recovered and now is kiting away. The Zero has a bunch of Spear Warriors still charging back. Alright, if Liu Bu falls, maybe, maybe Baby Yoda has a chance. Tarin has lost his horse and his life. Guan Yu has finished him. Revenge for the Battle of Fun Castle, I guess. 
Now, John is kind of isolated. Zero's done a great job targeting the right generals, not going after John Zhao here. And his cavalry's on the reserve, has recovered and got a clean rear charge against the enemy front line. John Zhao has fallen. So these units will have invincibility, but also, you know, 25 points of morale to keep them afloat. Invincible doesn't give you unbreakable, so you can still route, especially if things like army loss kick in. Zero just has so many units still on both flanks. These will probably bounce back. Maybe not the Spear Warrior, but definitely the Crossbowmen, I feel like. Okay, we got a little bit of Messenger of Heaven trying to desperately make a charge here. But nothing can kill these generals. The cavalry's all gone. So I was giving an unbreakable boost on top of that. One final desperate charge here. Destroyed. And that's it. Congratulations to Zero for moving on to round two and well fought by Baby Yoda. Obviously there are some misplays. Oh, these poor yellow dragons running away. Uh, but overall, great fight. I feel like a little bit of extra microing uh, would have done uh, better for Baby Yoda in terms of his cavalry. Uh, just sending them out desperately to try to flank those archers is not a good idea. If the enemy gave you the general, you should have taken the general first. They could have overwhelmed uh, the three generals, deal massive damage to them. Uh, keeping your general's group is a good choice. And if he really wanted to solve the crossbow problem, he... Either could have used Haman better with the surprise attack ability as the units exit this river forest, activate so they become invisible with stock, charge up, that would prevent a lot of damage. Tauren has the 100% uh, range block chance, he could do that as well. You can buy time with both of those. Tingzhou Spear should have been in the front and he could have otherwise just used his generals to try to flank into the enemy formation instead, instead of using his cavalry and his cavalry could have been a more responsive unit. Uh, but overall, the infantry came in one at a time. Uh, pretty much three Huanglao Paragons made it, and then the rest of the Yellow Dragon made it. So the impact was minimum. Uh, even if they did overrun most of the Spear Guards in the front, you can see the massive amount of dead. Um, it just didn't amount to much as many of the cavalry on both flank, one out by Zero's forces, was able to recover, come back for a couple of rear flanks, and rout Baby Yoda's man in the center here, especially after the generals were killed. So let's end battle here and take a look at the actual casualty counts. So just taking a look, Huanglao Paragons didn't do as much as they could have. The few units who actually reached the front and actually managed to get into melee combat with the Spear Warriors did well. The others, especially on the flank that got flanked by the enemy cavalry, uh, pretty much wasn't able to return much damage at all. Yellow Dragons, after they have routed, showed up and did a decent amount of damage. Tindril Spears are very good, they're very resilient, they can fight for a long time. Due to their misplaced devotion, uh, they were able to do damage, but if they were able to sync up together better, uh, it would have basically resulted in a better fight in the melee in the middle. The Cavalry should have been their only weapon against generals. So Cao Cao, Guan Yu, Lu Bu, obviously the more premium generals in the selection here. Uh, the only answer that Baby Yoda probably had is his cavalry, and they weren't really used to target the generals, but rather got targeted by the generals. So that was a bit unfortunate. Um, Herman didn't get to do anything in that battle. He was the only general sent to answer three generals, so he was sent to get killed. Uh, he could have had a huge impact. Hail of Arrows on that front line, whether the crossbowmen or the spear warriors, could have had a huge impact. Use a better surprise attack to protect his infantry, and just in combat, Herman is fairly strong if he's not isolated and getting picked off by three generals who are dismounted. Very smart play uh, by Zero. So that's our first match of the subscriber game tournament. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and a big congratulation for Zero to advance, and we'll see him in round two. And thanks again for Baby Yoda for participating, and on to the next match. Bye!